Hello, everybody. My name is Annie T. Broughton, and I am the pastor and apostle of Shepherd's Heart Ministries right here in Greenville, South Carolina. And I want to take this opportunity and this privilege and this honor to welcome you, uh, this viewing audience, to another Just Call Me Sarah. I'm so happy today to be here in your, in your homes, and we're going to be talking about leading ladies. That's right some leading ladies out there amen praise God and we want to talk to you today we want to talk to you about what God is doing in your life and how uh, God is using you so mightily in these last days and how God is branching you forth in the in the land and how God is just doing great and mighty things in your life so I have a, a beautiful guest with me today um, She's awesome in the kingdom. She's powerful in the kingdom. And I love this woman of God. And she is none other than Pastor Hope Carpenter from Redemption World Outreach. Welcome, Pastor Hope. I Amen. Love you, man. I love you. <laughs> and we're going to have a good time today. I know it. We're going to have a blessed time That's today. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Hope, I wanted to. Uh, invite you onto the program because who else could I get who epitomized a leading lady more so than you? Amen. Praise God. And you always have such joy. You always have such happiness about you. And that just is news to everybody. We're happy to be connected with you with, um, Apostle Ryan of Redemption. So I want to talk to you about being a leading lady because it's what you are. Mm. What is a leading lady? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's anything that uh, most people aspire. Well, they do aspire to it, but I don't think they know the price tag okay. that comes with it. Mm -hmm. There is a huge price tag um, to anybody who is doing anything for God. We're just a target. Uh, my husband says, I think I have a bullseye on my back <laughs> and just for the devil to just keep shooting at me, shooting at me. I said, absolutely, honey, yeah. we have an adversary. He is yeah. the devil and he does not want us doing what God's called us to do. He doesn't want us taking territory. He doesn't want us being everything that God's called us to be. He doesn't mm -hmm. want us occupying his territory and taking it for the kingdom of God. So, yeah, he's mad. And he's out to steal, he's out to kill, and he's out to destroy us. And, you know, we've seen that in our life. You mm -hmm. ask, what's a leading lady? Yeah. Um, there's a, I said there's a price tag to it. Mm -hmm. There is a price to pay. Um, we've paid a high price for it. I don't think there's anybody um, who's doing anything for God who's just tiptoeing through the tulips in exactly. their life. And, exactly. And just blessings are falling out of the sky, <laughs> you know, and we just lay down and everything's wonderful, hunky-dory, and peaceful. So I do think as a leading lady and somebody who's called by God in the ministry, we do have to first count the cost. Amen. And, you know, the Bible teaches us that, that we have to count the cost and, and know what lies ahead of us when we're called by God. Um, when we get called by God, I think we're just so excited. You yes. know, oh, we're so gung-ho for the Lord that I don't really know that we understand what counting the cost is. I didn't know, you know, when I fell in love with that little blonde-headed guy <laughs> running down the basketball court with his little red cheeks. You know, I thought, oh, he's so cute. I just want to marry him. You know, you're 19 <laughs> years old. Yeah. You don't think about 35, 36, 37, 30, 40 years old, 46 now years old, Wow. you know, on down the road. And, Amen. Oh, uh, you know, what, what you're going to encounter, you don't. So um, it, it is a high price, but at the end of the day, it is the most rewarding yes. thing. I think it's the most wonderful privilege Amen. to be called by God, be to know that God. He loves us that much, and He knows the value He's placed on the inside of us. We don't know yes. what all's on the inside of us. Only our manufacturer, the one who made us, knows mm -hmm. how special we are and, and how unique and, and the gifts and the callings he's placed on the inside of us. So at the end of the day, for me, it's just such a humbling experience mm -hmm. that he chose me 
that he called me to represent him. And, and I've done a great job at times, and then I've done a very poor job <laughs> at times. We all but, know. you know, I'm just so thankful mm -hmm. for his love. You know, his love that is so wide, we, don't e we can't even see how wide it is. It's so deep, you can't even measure it. It's so high, you can't reach to it. Amen. I call it, it's the agape love of God. It's the love of the higher reaching down to the lower. Amen. And then elevating the lower above the higher. That's what agape love is. Because he who had no sin, yes. he was, who was perfect, mm -hmm. saw me, but loved me so deep and so wide and so high. And he saw my sin. Wow. But he said, Amen. I'm, gonna, I'm going to take her and I'm going to elevate her above me because I'm going to take on her sin. Amen. I'm going to die for her. So, yeah, you say, oh, I have a lot of joy. <laughs> I'm just so thankful that he loves me. Amen. And that he called me. Yes. And you, you mentioned that uh, we don't all, all the time know the cost. Yeah. When God calls us, uh, when he speaks to us and when he calls us and say, well, I want you to go here. I want you to do that. I want you to start this ministry. Right. I remember when I first started the church and I had a meeting with Apostle Ron and, and we sat down and talked and he said, Miss Annie, are you <laughs> in it for the long haul? <laughs> and I said, yeah, because I was really excited, yeah. you know. But when, you, when you're excited and you, and you say you're in it for the long haul, you don't really realize how long the haul. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy the uh, hall. <laughs> yes, or uh, how heavy yes. the hall is. But, you know, there are some women now that's, that's listening to this broadcast, and God has called them. Yeah. You know, he, he's called them for great things in the, to do in the kingdom, and they've been kind of like sitting back and being a little apprehensive, and should I, or should I not? Yeah. You know, I'm thinking, they're thinking about their families, thinking yeah. about their husbands, thinking about their children, you know. But I want to encourage some women to step out yes. and do what God called them to do. Now, you talk about a cost. Um, what do you mean exactly when you say a cost? Because we don't want to frighten nobody. We don't want to frighten them away from doing so. But yes. what is the cost that maybe some of them have to pay? Well, there's a lot in counting the cost. Okay. You know, when you... When you go to purchase something, it, it costs you something. Okay. Um, you know, I could go buy a pair of shoes at Walmart, which I do often, or Target, and it doesn't cost that much. Mm -hmm. But then I can go to Nordstrom or to Neiman Marcus, which Ooh. I don't do very often because <laughs> it costs so much. Yeah. But there is usually a high price to okay. pay for something that is remarkably valuable. Hmm. So if there is a high call on your life, there's usually a high cost to be paid. Okay. Could be your family. Um, you know, not everybody loves your call and not everybody values the call. Mm -hmm. um, it could be friends mm -hmm. that you have to stay away from. I've had to, I've had to say bye-bye to a lot of friends, you yeah. know, over the last few years just to, to wholly dedicate and consecrate myself to the call of God. Mm -hmm. Not that they were bad people, but they just weren't going where I was going. And mm -hmm. their, the call on their life wasn't the same as the call on my life. Um, you know, there's some things that other people can do that you and I can't do. There's places some people can go, and not necessarily that it's sin, but it's just we, we cannot do those things. Amen. And, you know, I, I am a huge example. You know, I have found my life years past in compromise thinking that I could. But you can't. Wow. You can't. Amen. And when there is a call and a mandate on your life, God will make sure you don't. I mean, mm -hmm. he, I mean he rattles cages and he can make <laughs> you very miserable. And I would say to those women, you know, there's, there's I think, a higher price to pay not to step out into the okay, call of God. Okay, not to step out. Because okay. you're going to be so miserable. Mm -hmm. Nothing you do is going to satisfy because you're not operating in purpose. You know, I think the purpose of God in our life, what mm -hmm. God has purposed for us to do, sets all the boundaries in our life. It helps okay. you to set boundaries. So when you know your purpose, you know the purpose of a thing, you won't abuse your life. So see, if this, I, these are glasses because mm -hmm. I'm 46 years old now <laughs> and I have to wear them to read, but the purpose of these 
or to read, to right. see. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't know what these were, I, I could say, wow, that's a hair bow or so, you know, and just put it, but I would be <laughs> abusing the purpose of these glasses. I would never draw the full potential out of these glasses because they're not being used for their purpose. Exactly. So until we step out into purpose and know what God has called us to, we will never get the full reward mm -hmm. of what we were designed for. Amen. Uh, there's a scripture in the Word of God that says that many have been called, but only a few chosen. Yes, Matthew. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe because uh, when God calls us, we don't readily answer. You know, uh, we are trying to figure out, can we do this? Yeah. You know, what, what, what do I have to do? Yeah. But God calls the weak. Yes, he does. Not many mighty yeah, yes. are called. Mm -hmm. He calls those that are lowly. Yes. You know, he calls those that are just, he calls the mamas. Yeah, <laughs> he does. And yeah. I think it's all just, you know, wrapped up in that God's going, it's to give God glory. Yes. He didn't want us to glory. He said he is going to get the glory. So if we are so good in ourselves, mm -hmm. we can get the glory. Yes. But when we know who we are and we know how bad we've been and we know we don't have it all together and we know that we yes. are not apt and able to do this in our own flesh. Can't do we, it. We can't do it. So God is going yeah. to get the glory. Amen. Because he's doing it through us. He is doing it through us. And I thank God for that because he looks beyond yes, he our does. faults. And he see that need. Yeah. And he knows that there's something in us that can be a blessing to somebody Amen. else. Amen. And he does use our test for he testimonies. Does. He does. He promises. Yeah. He said, I will use all things. Yeah. Because all things work for the good yes, of those that love God. Yeah. And called according to his purpose. Yes. He has a perfect plan. Um, in Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, well, I know the plan. I love that. That scripture. I have for you. You know, and I, plans to prosper yes. you. <laughs> good plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a little break, and we got an awesome dancer today. Her name is Miss Maya Cohen, and we're going to go to her right now. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Love the way you raise 
And I love the way you keep me. You just keep on keeping me. You just keep on keeping me. so blessed today to have uh, Apostle Hope Carpenter from Redemption with us today and we're talking about leading ladies and because you know when God put it in my heart to talk about this uh, I wanted to let some women know that they have been chosen by God chosen by God just like we are here today we are on assignment we were selected we were chosen by God and I want to talk to some women that may be sitting at home or at the kitchen table or on their beds or just on their jobs, whatever they are, wherever they are, I want to encourage them to step out. Amen. The Word of God in, in St. John 15 and 16, it reads, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you should ask of the Father in my name, Amen. he may give it to you. Amen. I want to talk about women that are chosen. Let's talk about that. Yeah, it, it Im implies that we don't really have a choice, do Amen. we? Amen. <laughs> yes. So we were talking earlier about, you know, go on and step out and do what God has called you to do. Be what God has called you to be. Um, when you're chosen, you're, you're picked. Wow. You're picked out of a group. There was others that could have been chosen. Yes. But God chose you. God chose me. Yes. And, and that is an awesome privilege that God sees something so valuable yes. in you that he chose you. It doesn't matter if you feel valuable. It doesn't wow. matter that you, you think you're capable God, the God of the universe, the, the one who fashioned you and formed you and made you in your mother's womb Praise God. long before you ever had a chance to sin, long before you ever had a chance to mess up, long before you ever had a divorce or, or a rape or anything that you've gone through, long before any of that, God chose you before the very foundations before the of foundation. the earth. Before the foundation. That should just, yeah. that, that rattles my little brain, <laughs> my little Calhoun Falls brain, you know, <laughs> that, that God knew me. Yes. He foreknew me. Yes. 
and he predestined that I should walk. It doesn't say that you will walk. It says that you should walk. So that implies to me that I have a choice, hmm. that, I, that I can or I cannot walk out the purposes of God in my life. He chose me. He's predestined it. He set up the steps that I should walk in, but it is our choice. So what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? There's I, not an amount of money that could ever pay you enough. Uh -uh. There's, there's, you can't be good enough, but the Bible says when he looks at us, he doesn't see us. Our <laughs> righteousness are, are as filthy rags. But all he look, when he sees us, all he sees is Jesus. We are clothed and robed in robes of righteousness. Amen. Right standing. That encourages me today. It encourages me. I'm excited. Yes. My fire just been reignited. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> just sitting here. We can listen. do this, yes. Annie. Just, just go for us. Yes. Just do what he's called us to do. In the book of Joel, it says, you know, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Your sons and your daughters. Amen. I receive that from yeah. mine today. She'll prophesy, you yes. know, and God is calling the daughters. He's calling the, the CEOs. He's calling the presidents. He's calling the, the nurses. He's calling the, he's just calling the women, yes. period, to, to do greater, to, to accept the challenge. Yeah. To, to say, okay, God, my answer is yes. Yes. We need to hear some yeses from the women. Amen. Amen. And Praise that doesn't God. mean that you have to hold a microphone or you have to do a TV show mm -hmm. or, you know, you have to marry a preacher or you have to <laughs> preach. It doesn't mean those things. It means, you know, to shine your light in whatever arena that you are in. Some of you are called, but you're not called to a microphone. You're called to a nursing home. Hmm. You're, you're called to the hospital system or you're called to the public school system. You know, whatever arena that you are in, you are called Amen. and you are chosen. You know, we may, wherever you are, you may be the only Jesus some of those people ever see. You had mentioned a little earlier about um, different backgrounds and rape or different things that people may have encountered in their lives and and they may or may not feel as though they are worthy. But one scripture that comes to mind is in Psalm 30 and 5, it says, For his anger endures but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy yes. cometh in the morning. I believe that God wants to walk in that joy. Yeah, he does. Forget about the things that's happened. Right. The word of God Let said, forget go. those things that behind us. Yes, and it, press. Yes, and press towards that mark. Yes, of the and, high and I think the whole, there's two things in that scripture that always stick out to me, Annie, and it is letting go. Yes. And pressing. Yes. Letting go and pressing because there's no way that you can take both of your hands okay. and press mm -hmm. towards something if you your hands are still full of the stuff that's in the past. You yeah. have to let go of what's in the past and turn around and press toward the mark. That Have you ever worked out? I used to, I don't work <laughs> out anymore, but, but my husband works out a good bit and I see him doing bench presses. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's not an easy thing. Anytime you lift weight or, or you press on something, that indicates that there is a force that you're trying to move. Mm -hmm. So. When I see him working out, he's pressing, and it's not an easy thing. So then I take that same scripture, and I think about my life. I have to turn around and take my life and press yes. on, purpose on purpose toward the mark, and I have to on purpose let go of everything that tries to keep me in the past and turn around on purpose and press hard on purpose toward my future. Amen. And also we have to... Um, Drop the baggage. Yes. You know, uh, Paul teaches us to lay aside every weight. Every weight. That, that was so, so easily. Yes, easily. Keeps you down. Yes. Because we, when we go forth, we're carrying so much with us. Yes. You know. Can't we do it. To drop, that it. Behind, drop it. Drop yeah. it. Drop it. I, I want to talk to some women. You are, they are leading ladies. They are powerful in the kingdom. Yes. And they have to drop the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, 
Cast them on Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Cast your care on Jesus. Wow. And it's amazing that um, so many times we don't. No. Yeah. We don't cast our care on the Lord. And he's there. Yes, he is. To help us, you know, to comfort us, to speak to us, you know, to dry our tears when we do weep. Right. Because I think sometimes we weep. It said the word of God said weep endures for a night. One thing that God showed me, he said, um, a lot of times we as we leading ladies, we feel like we can't weep openly. Yeah. In front of the crowd. Because we have to act like we're perfect. Exactly. And that's pride. <laughs> I mean, the root of that's just, just cut to the chase. That is pride. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's sin. That's sin. That's just I as much sin as any other outward display of mm -hmm. sin. You know, we want to talk about everybody's outward displays of sin, but we don't want to talk about the sin that hides in the church. Okay. You know, <laughs> pride, jealousy, backbiting, all of that. That's sin. All that sin. Yeah. So we can be open. Yes. We don't have to weep at night. We can be openly just well, cast that's it on what the God. body is supposed to be. I'm supposed okay. to be able to pick up my phone and say, Annie, I'm struggling. Okay. Annie, I sinned today. Okay. I need you. I need you to pray for me. I need you yes. to, to help me pray through. Yes. You know, that's what the body, and it's not to just share each other's victories. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, I want to um, just encourage some women. I want to close out in prayer. Um, and hopefully by them listening to this broadcast, they will realize and know that they are leading ladies. Yes. Amen. Beautiful women Amen. out there. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm going to ask you to pray. I sure will. Amen. Lord, I thank you so much thank just you, for Jesus. the opportunity to come into your presence. Hallelujah, God. You said that we could come boldly thank into you, your presence in our time of need. Yes, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are so gracious to us. And so I just gracious. bring these ladies to you. I bring yes. our lives today. Yes, God. Every woman who is listening to us, who is called, who is chosen, who's thank been picked you, out of the out of the crowd. Yes, Father. And and she knows that that your hand is on her life. Give her the courage and the strength to fight the good fight of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Give her the courage and the strength to to just drop and let go of those things that are behind her and help her to press toward the mark, yes, the high calling of God high in Christ calling. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I just pray right now, right Lord, now. whatever burden that is on her shoulder, she yes, would cast Father. it on you. God, that she would give it to you yes, Father. and that she would be released. God, that she would thank have great you, faith to step out and do what you've called her to do. And I thank, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.